The Lord be with you. Welcome to the Lord's house. We begin our worship with the singing of our first hymn, hymn number 583. confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I have said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, by virtue of my office, as a call ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. Let this be recorded for a generation to come, so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord, that he looked down from his holy height. From heaven the Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die. 
that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise. When people gather together in kingdoms to worship the Lord, you will arise and have pity on Zion. It is a time to favor her. The appointed time has come. God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday after the Epiphany is from Nehemiah chapter 8. All the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate, and they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord has commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And as he opened it, all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They read from the book, from the law of God, clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, 
so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greatest, greater honor. And our, our, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now, you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. God and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for our triple alleluia and for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as, he was, as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him, and began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all, who spoke, and all spoke well of him, and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years in six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to one, none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Nahum the Syrian. They heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and drove him out of the town, and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. Passing through the midst, he went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join together this morning the confession of our Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. We confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We join again to see our hymn of the day, hymn number 839. Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is a continuation of last Sunday's epistle, our epistle lesson this morning from 1 Corinthians 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. As I said, last Sunday we heard about all the gifts that God had given to the church and has given to the church. For the use, of course, for the benefit of us as the members of the church. Today, though, we're also going to look at not just the church, but we're going to look at something else because today is also Life Sunday. We're going to look at the fact of the church in comparison to us as members of it and what we are called by God to do. So we begin. That there are many parts. We know that. Look around you. You have many members sitting next to you and around you, in front of you, behind you, and yet we are one body. We are the handiwork of God. We are the church. Oh, oh yes, St. Paul's Lutheran Church is right here in this place. It does take up space. But we are the ones who make this building what it is. Many churches have closed, sadly. Many churches have been sold. People are living in them. They've made them into apartment buildings or homes or storage units or whatever else it might be because the building is the building. 
It's used by many people for many different various reasons. But we are here this morning for the usage that God has given to us to worship Him. Through holy baptism, as he says right here, Paul does, we are the church. You have been brought to faith by God. You were made to follow him. Made in the sense that now you've been brought from your mother's womb to this place. Today. Many days. Lord willing, until the Lord calls you home. For God, the giver of many gifts, He's the one who has given each that we have talked about last week. And therefore, if we have a problem with our gift or the gifts of others, we have to argue with Him. We have to take it up with Him. And quite frankly, He's already spoken on the matter. So we really don't have a whole lot to say, except thanks be to God. See, the church is exactly as God intended it to be. You are here because God intended you to do just that, to be here, and to use the gifts that He has given you. The church, as even we humans as Scripture has told us, are fearfully and wonderfully made. God is the one who gives life. Not just to the church, but to each and every one of us. None of us said to their parents, Hey, give birth to me. Nope. None of us did. God is the one that saw fit to bring together our mother and father, in some cases, in strange circumstances. But yet it still was what God intended to do. He brought them together and He gave us life. Because unfortunately, though, what has happened in our day and our age, as we so sadly see, because of sin... We think we have a say in life. I know we can argue that until forever, which unfortunately we probably will. But as I said, because of sin, we think we have a say. God is the one. God is the one who has brought men and women together for the sake of, as he commanded Adam and Eve, to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Same words he said to Noah, after the flood. And guess what? Those words have never been rescinded. We, as God's people, know that we are, as human beings, still to do just that. Be fruitful and multiply as God has given and fill the earth. We have been called to do just that. Because we know that as the many in the church, by the grace of God, raising up godly little boys and little girls into men and women, that as only God can do, He allows that to carry on. That is the true joy in the body of Christ. When the sounds of children in the congregation. To know that life is as God intended. That's what He has called us to do. Our text then goes on and talks about the fact of every part is necessary in the church. Think about that. The Lord knows every one of us. He is the one that has called us into Him and He has made us exactly as He saw fit. That is how we know the church is His doing, not ours. And there are to be no divisions in it. 
Sadly, of course, we have to look at ourselves sometimes and go, hmm, how are we doing in that category? We're not. We know that. Here in the United States, I mean, you think about it, we've got 24 divisions of Lutheranism, churches that call themselves Lutheran in this country, at least 24. We've got the Presbyterian Church splintered across the way, the Episcopalian Church, the Anglican Church. We've got all these denominations. And yet there is only one God. How did we get to this point? Of course, the easy answer is always sin. But we also know that we are to be more than just sinners. We are the forgiven people of God. We are to be bringing each other to the fact of there is only one God and there is only to be one church. But sadly, as Scripture even informs us, there is not going to be this side of heaven that unity as only God himself can call for. But that shouldn't mean that we don't try. But as always, there is only one thing that leads and guides the church. has to be. And that is God's Word. And when God's word is not held as the God-given word, inspired by him, infallible, and so forth, then unfortunately there will be division. But see, even in the midst of that, there's still supposed to be caring for one another. There's supposed to be the idea that if someone is suffering, all are suffering. And when one rejoices, all rejoice. That's what St. Paul said. So here we are, looking at the church and looking at life. Because unfortunately, the reason that we celebrate, sadly, Life Sunday is because of not life. Because of decisions that man has made. Not just recently in our lifetime, of course. It's not like these things have just come on to the world. They've been around forever. But see, this is what happens when we decide that we know better. It kind of goes back to what I said before. We think that we have a say in the whole matter. How did we get to the point that we have now where we're looking at the death of 70 million plus children and we celebrate that in the world? It's a travesty. It's a tragedy. Now, of course, we always pray that the Lord will allow there to be change. That man will see a value in life. That we will see life as God does. Caring for all. That is our prayer for today. Around the country we've seen marches and different various cities in Washington, D.C. The word is out, has been for a generation. But sadly, there are still those who desire death rather than life. But see, every part is necessary in the church, just as every human is a blessing from the Lord. When we grasp that, then there will be changes in the lives of others. St. Paul goes on and says, Now we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. You know that. You're all different. You've already said that. And God has appointed in the church first apostles and prophets and teachers, miracles and gifts of healing, helping, administering, and so on and so forth. But then he goes on and says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, and the answer to each and every one of those questions is, no, they're not. Because everybody has their own gift. Therefore, he says, earnestly desire the higher gifts. 
Say, what are those? Love. You are the body of Christ. God has given officers and offices in the church. A couple of Sundays ago, we brought forward all those who are holding office now in the church. They vowed that they were going to do what God has called them to do. That's right. At that time, they will do it as only God can desire it. Not all the same, yet all serve. Our Sunday school teachers, our Bible class leaders, Wednesday school teachers, our organists, our sound guys, everything that we do, plus many, many, many more, even behind the scenes, everything is a gift that God has given for the church. Which, of course, the greatest gift that He gives to the church is His Son. Jesus Christ has come into this world so that even a world that has chosen death may know that there is hope. They may know that there is goodness because there is one God who sent His Son To forgive sins. Not just one sin, not just our pet sin, but all sins. That is godly love. That is what we need to hear each and every day. That Jesus Christ is the one. And that God has allowed us to see that children are a blessing, not a burden. I'm not saying there aren't times we want to send them to somebody else. You know that. I'm not saying that at all. But they don't hold us back. They're not, there's not something better that we can do than raise children as God has called us to. It's going to take a long time for healing, forgiveness. But that's what we're here for. The church is here to proclaim that when women and men choose wrongly, sinfully, that there is forgiveness. That it is only through Jesus Christ that we only have to look to Him Where does it begin? Right here. The very body that Jesus gave to Himself. He is the bridegroom. We are the bride. We are the church. And we have a message of hope that no one else has. We are the message the world needs to have and hear. Christ. The forgiveness of sins. The peace that only He can give. So yes, we're many parts. But we're one. In our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you please rise as we continue with our prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we your people gather once again as you've called us to as the church. We take the time that you have given to us. We set aside the things of this world. We enter into your sanctuary, giving you thanks and praise for the sending of your Son. That forgiveness of our sins is true. It is ours. It is for all those who repent. Father, we ask that you will be with us that we may truly be that beacon of light, the salt, as you've called us to be to the world, that we may speak the truth as only you have given to and through your word, that others may also turn from their ways and know the true joy and peace of Christ. Father, we pray for our world. We ask that you'll be a blessing 
to each and every one who has made decisions that are not of you. Gracious Lord, we ask that you will watch over them, that you will allow them to repent of their ways. That they will not see death as a, as a good thing, but rather life as a blessing. Father, we pray that you will be with all those who are traveling to different walks around this country, that you will protect them and keep them, watch and keep them and bring them back to their families as quickly as possible. Father, we pray for all families. We ask that you'll be a blessing to them with husbands and wives and children. Father, we ask that you will continue to be watching over them as only you can do. We thank and praise you, Father, for all the blessings that you give to those who are in need of our prayers this day, that you will strengthen them and be a blessing to them. For those that have had surgery and are in recovery, Father, we pray that you will watch over them and bless them, allow their uh, recovery to be successful and speedy. Father, for those who continue to suffer because of COVID here in this place and around the country, we ask that you will watch over them and be a blessing to them as well. Gracious Father, for those who have lost loved ones because of the pandemic, that you will be a blessing to them and allow them to also, uh, if they have not known our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, come to faith and also have this peace that you have given to all. Father, we ask that you will also continue to be with the young daughter of Noah and Rebecca, that you will keep this young one in womb in your care, that you will be a blessing to it, and allow the doctors to use their skills to their highest abilities. Father, we ask that you will also continue to be a blessing to uh, those who are not doing that, which is well-pleasing in your sight. We pray that you will be with our congressman as well as our president, that you will be with our uh, governor and the state that we live in at this time and its legislature, that you will be with them, that they will turn from their ways, that are, if they are not of you, they repent and know true joy. Father, we pray for the, the uh, mayor of our village and its board as well. Father, we pray that you will also be with all those who serve us in the military in all the different places and, and different branches. That you will be a blessing to them, keeping them in your care. And if it be your will, that they may return home quickly in time of peace. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the fact that as your church, we have the word that you've given to us. Father, we ask that you will allow us to continue to teach it to those that you give to us in our Sunday schools, our Bible classes, our Wednesday schools. We thank you, Father, for those that are using their gifts this day, even proclaiming the name of your Son, that you will watch over them and keep them. We ask that you will be with our church body, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. May we continue to be a beacon of light in this world. We pray for our synodical president, our district president, and our circuit visitor. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank and praise you now that as we look forward to the joy and peace of your salvation, that we may rest in the assurance and the care that you are the one and only true God, that you love us, that you have sent your Son to die and rise for us, and have given us life. May we continue to be a blessing to those around us, looking to you for all things. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Continue now with our community liturgy. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. <laughs> It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying...
together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which his betrayed took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, when given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Will you please rise as we join together in the singing of the Nunc de Minas. Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you all his peace. We join together and sing our recessional hymn, hymn number 398. 